you know when you talk about uh, retail landscape it's been a while eh? we we keep seeing the retail chains in the country and how they operate um we have very many actually big big names of of retailers who are actually chains right not just a single shop yeah. that comes in and goes but a shop that is more than just a shop you know we we talk about some that have come that have collapsed others that have come in place others that have come from outside the country that come in and they don't do well they go out the point is there's not just a single large supermarket or retail chain no there are several there are many that you know come they start they go others come start and go and take it off mm. and take over yes the baton is handed over to the next and yeah. we continue in that manner yeah indeed mm. so it happens all the time that you know you have one you have another you have one you have another so joining us for the conversation is faith wanderi who is the md east and west africa for nielsen and um we all know nielsen is a is a data collecting company but she'll tell us more about it and exactly what they do as we have that conversation and we'll welcome her with the day's proverb faith good morning good morning good to have you on the show welcome to kenya's biggest conversation oh thank you that is the hot seat of the situation room make yourself comfortable thank you it's, it's, a, bit <laughs> it's a bit high no it's okay. fine don't go too low <laughs> Keep yourself in a com- at a comfortable level. You'll tell us uh, shortly about uh, what you do at Nelson and what it's all about, but you hear the day's proverb. The day's proverb comes uh, f- from a book. We, the previous one we had a Somali proverb which you cannot repeat, right? You can't even remember no. how it was. No. So, the day's proverb is uh, from Chinua Chebe book, which is as old as Siti Muga. Eh, uh-huh, Siti? It is actually true. Mm. It is. It is the um, Things Fall Apart was first published on 17th of June 1958. I had been born 3 months earlier. So um, yes indeed we mm. need mates. Mm. What's the proverb? Proverb those whose palm kennels were cracked for them by a benevolent spirit should not forget to be humble. Those whose palm kennels were cracked open by a benevolent spirit should not should not forget to be humble mm. remember who helped you yes when the heavy lifting was done for you mm. please remember don't give yourself a necessary just sit up there see, see i can actually crack this no 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 I'm, I'm remember good. remember how it was cracked mm. and it wasn't you who mm. cracked it mm. yes why did you pick this one i picked it because do explain it well do explain it again mm. can not difficulties right. um, palm. So the palm fruits which is okay. the little fruits right it's little orange fruit. distinguish it from a coconut so that palm fruit that size mm. coconut a little bigger mm. liken that to someone's head wait uh, palm fruit is what size like palm a palm fruit is this size that's like a lime a little smaller than a lime smaller actually. than a lime right mm-hmm. fleshy fruit you pound it out you get your oil on one side you get your S- soup whatever on the other side right so what remains is the hard nut that kids we would often then go and try to crack and eat the little seed that was inside because you know actually come to think of it, it was a tasteless thing but anyway it was fun because you got to bang out the thing and eat it but it's very very hard and as a child you're either going to knock off your fingers or lose a nail so you would need an adult to help you or somebody Cracked. stronger to okay. crack the nut mm-hmm. So somebody who cracks it for you was revered in your eyes. Mm. So that would make a lot of sense. It's very hard to crack that palm nut after the flesh and whatever had been removed. Mm. So it's like the macadamia fruit. Actually it is in terms of its the strength Size of the nut and how you crack that. How thing. hard the nut is. Okay. So one who cracks it for you basically has done you justice. <laughs> huge <laughs> some huge favor. Yeah. And always remember to be humble. Yes. Come with humility. Yeah. Don't come there bragging at you know I'm the one who I'm taking credit so for something you didn't do. actually do on your own. Mm. Yes. Okay. Faith, how do you relate to that proverb? Um I think I yeah, I agree in terms of uh the point of being humble. Uh in terms of from a personal point of view and even from an organizational point of view in terms of what you do and the services that you render. But I also believe that you cannot you cannot do something alone. Mm. You know. you need people you need systems you need support in order to get to the next level you can win 
alone but you can also i mean fail fail alone alone, alone. Yeah. yeah but most more often you're going to fail alone oh, definitely if you're with others you're likely to win yeah okay tell us about nelson what is his company so uh nelson uh, <coughs> in sub saharan africa or in africa we're an information services company what do we do we give you data from the retail space which is the different channels that we all visit on a monthly basis to shop your groceries your supermarkets uh, as well as we also give you the consumer side of the business in terms of the habits the changing shopping habits that we experience so ideally for especially for fast moving consumer goods we are the one true source of data to tell you what your market share is uh in whatever category or whatever space that you're playing in so how do you get that data we have we have a team on ground mm. every day collecting data from these channels and of course then after that we process the data and handle and share with clients every month so is it that you talk to the consumers or you talk to the retail outlets so we do both mm. that's why i said we have the retail side of the business and then we have the consumer side of the business so for the retail side we'll go to all the supermarkets the groceries the kiosks your dukas your table tops and get data from them what do you ask um it's a whole essentially is there a questionnaire that mm. someone fills yes but it's all uh, it's all through digital uh then it's also back end we have a team also in the back end because of course we know that in africa data getting data sometimes it's difficult and it's dark yeah so we have a whole methodology in terms of counting even stock because that's that's market share it's for me to tell you you own 50% of the market or you own 20% mm. meaning you have to take the stock in terms of opening stock uh we have very good collaboration with retailers and all this uh, and grocery people so they'll give us access in terms of these are my receipts these are my purchases then of course with that we can say okay i know how much you sold in a week or in a day or in a month and then we collect that data mm-hmm. on the back end yeah. right okay so then the assumption is that everybody who's walking into a supermarket or even going to a kiosk to purchase certain thing that what you're buying then essentially forms a footprint yes of your consumerism so then what do you take that how does then that inform you what does that do for you does that say based on how people buy what we're going to put on the shelf and what if it's number one blind buying what if it's on that day well i'm just feeling like buying a particular thing or is there a pattern that you look for to then inform retailers Um so I think for when I let me talk about retailers let me start from there for retailers they want to know what's their contribution in terms of the market size mm. yeah so I mean if you're talking to Carrefour you're talking to Chandarana they want to know how they're doing or is it a Naivas or a Quick Mart and that for us we call them the tier 1 mm. so for them it's more about what am I stocking in my stores that are uh, obviously that the consumer wants to buy on a daily basis so as you mentioned today you feel like buying a different brand right from your normal brand yeah. for example um and that also for us we track that and we can tell the shift in terms of categories so we all know what we are facing as a country and not even just as a country in fact, even in terms of a region yeah in mm-hmm. terms of inflation so we've seen different shopping habits you know there is this whole the pricing you know it's a pricing war game at the moment so consumers are not being as loyal to brands mm. it's more about what value am i getting and what price am i going to pay for that value so all these shifts we can tell from the data it's it's different data points mm. that obviously will inform for example if you walked to me and told me okay i have this small business mm. it's an sme business i don't know what to stock or i don't know what categories i should keep within my supermarket and then i want to open this small shop in umoja so for us we'll know okay what's your consumer segment mm-hmm. around that area what would they most likely want to buy and what brands and we can inform you you know in terms of uh, Yeah. In terms of the investment. When you work so let's let's work with the tier 1s, okay? Yeah. This tier 1s have invested heavily yeah. in their outlets. Yes. They've invested heavily in their distribution network. Yeah. 
in in their entire supply chain i also assume that they inv invested heavily in data collection by themselves without nielsen coming in so when nielsen comes in what value is it that you sell to them so then they give you access to their own data which of course for them for them that data is is their weapon yeah true so they've invested heavily and then of course they're all operating on a pos system yeah but when they're collecting that data don't forget they're collecting within their own chains okay yeah. meaning they also need to compare themselves against number one competition the next retail chain number two in terms of the universe so for nielsen we don't look at just one channel we look at total universe of outlets in kenya so we know currently we're talking about over 250,000 retail stores. When I talk about retail stores, it's like supermarkets, groceries, your dukas, your tabletops. What is permanently placed that we can go and count, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we can tell the evolution, okay, for example, right now we are growing at 3%, mm -hmm. yeah? So we are going to give you a standardized read, not only under your tier one or what we call modern trade, but also against the total universe, which also includes that we call it general trade or traditional trade. That's your dukas, your groceries and your tabletops. So with that market extrapolation and that view of total market is how we come in. So, I mean. Hypothetically, mm. today where we sit, modern trade contributes 39% of total basket, you know, in Kenya. Mm. Yeah. And then 61 is still. Is the informal. Uh, yeah. Because we all know, we all live in estates, we all have your kiosk, you still have your duka around the corner, you yeah. still have your supermarket. So traditional trade in Kenya is still very important. My question actually was mm. for this. <coughs> tier one modern shops mm. for you to start gathering this information you're working with them to give you so they give you the data yes yeah so at that point what is it that is incentivizing them to give you data and how well, how much do you trust the data that they're giving you so number one we are partners with the tier ones uh, meaning there's mutual trust between both parties Number two. What, what is the basis of this mutual trust? So th that that's the benefit he's asking me. What mm. is the benefit to them and to us? Mm. Yeah. So number two, there's no human intervention when we are when we get the data from them, because of course we use an API system. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, what is the benefit for them? It's the benchmark. So the benchmark against competition, the benchmark in terms of. Uh, the total national universe, how are they doing versus traditional trade. The benchmark in terms of which categories should I invest. If I'm talking about FLA, mm. which FLA is moving maybe more in terms of from the competition side of the business or from the traditional side of the business, that I should be investing more within my retail chains. So that is the benefit for them. Mm. The benefit for us is in terms of quality of data because now when we talk about total modern trade we can easily say that yes we cover 39 percent uh and obviously it gives us a better extrapolation in terms of numbers for the total national view so essentially you're a data bank we <laughs> yes i mean yeah we deal with data okay yeah and uh it gives you an edge when it comes to that line of business do you have competitors we do have competitors. We do have competitors in terms of um, maybe different methodologies. Mm. Uh, because for us, we highly, we highly um, use data science scientists, basically, to extrapolate the market. Mm. To do a total Kenya census, I mean, we've all, we live in Kenya. Mm. Even just a population census, you can imagine how expensive it is. Yep. Um, so for us, we do a census, but a sample census every, every month, 
yeah mm. like a small area you'll take a kibera as in to ensure that you keep abreast in terms of with the market changes and the evolving channels so that investment is done by nilson mm. so we do don't so we do don't have with the kenya national bureau of, St of statistics not standard just statistics i'm going to ask about standards as well but because they collect data for the whole country yeah. and they have also a, a data bank yeah. so we do or oh, we have approached the, i mean let me let me talk from a position of i don't know currently okay. but previously we rely on that data a lot because in terms of um, when you're looking at okay let me not be a bit technical like when you're no, looking at a, a, please be a bit <laughs> so you see like when you're extrapolating that data because yeah. you can't do a census 100 percent you know for total country yeah. so you might do in terms of let's say the key 57 cities that contribute maybe 90 percent or 80 percent of our economic uh being you know as kenya output, mm. yes. output. Mm. but to extrapolate to the point where you understand you need kenya bureau of standard because of population uh population contribution so we have to correlate the, their data with our data in order for us to, you know, give a whole overview and say, okay, fine, maybe in this country I'm covering 85% of total census, but in terms from a po population point of view and an economic point of view, I'm actually covering 98%. So we overlay their data. Mm -hmm. So we cannot run a census without the KBS data as well. Okay. If you were to give an overview of the retail landscape, I mean, because this is something we're now getting into. Mm -hmm. If you look at Kenya, if you gave an overview, what does it look like right now? And I guess the indicators, if you're looking at indicators of good, bad, evolving, progressing, regressing, what does the retail landscape look like? Uh, interesting to note that sometimes we've seen, especially with those who then were the face of retail in the country having then exited the market because of one two three reasons how does that look now that we see the mushrooming of retail all over the place what then would be the indicators to say it's going well it's not from your point of view uh, <clears throat> i think uh in kenya especially in the last five years we've seen a lot of changes and then of course we all experienced the shock in 2020 uh, from obviously the COVID position. Mm. I must say Kenya, when you compare Kenya with other countries, even within Africa, we were lucky. We were not at reboot stage, you know, whereby we shut down totally as a country and we were prepared. So it was more about reinventing ourselves. So the retail, the retail space is reinventing itself so fast that you cannot almost predict tomorrow. You, we have noticed that because of an economic point of view and where we are, people have shut down. People have, I mean, they started as a duka, now they're doing hairdressing. Mm. People are shifting in terms of their strategies so fast that you have to almost keep abreast. Yeah? When you look at the top tier ones, I think the number one thing is <clears throat> you, we need to reinvent and innovate very fast. Mm. Um, and when I talk about reinvention and innovation with a localization aspect, you need to, we need to listen to each other as Kenyans. Yeah. Uh, Kenyans are very peculiar. We support our local brands and as well as we still have, you know, as some sort of percentage to global brands, but we're very, we're very loyal, if I must say, mm. um, pricing is something else to look out for. This is a statement supported by data. Yes. Okay. Yes. Pricing, if you look at pricing, yeah, pricing, uh, if you look at our, from a data point of view, you look at our top 10 manufacturers, they're contributing almost 45% of the total, of the total basket. What does that tell you? We are not having many entry. We don't have very many manufacturers opening our businesses. Yeah. Why are they not opening business? The cost of electricity, you know, mm. the cost of uh, production has become very high. We've had very many companies exiting their production to other countries, some of them in the northern side of Africa. Yeah. Why? We need more local players. So that is something 
that we need to yeah to watch out for um stuck at this point of modern trade contributing 39 percent of in the retail sector mm. and <clears throat> the other one being informal has this changed over the last say 10 15 years has it always been that has it been at 39 percent has it been more reducing or less and growing interesting modern trade has been growing mm -hmm. yeah so when you when i compare that percentage with maybe in 2020 we're talking on between 30 and 35 mm. but when you talk in terms of absolute value both of them are growing traditional trade is still growing as well as modern trade so modern trade is going to become very key for us um and it's when you look at in terms of sub-sahara africa mm. We are one of very key countries which has a very strong modern trade. Tanzania, Uganda, our neighbors don't have a strong modern trade. Mm. Meaning, even from our consumer purchasing power and our ability and infrastructure and supporting business, it means that there's still opportunity there. What's contributing to this growth? I think, I think it's also, I mean, as we know, mm. our country is very key when you look at in terms of East Africa. We have we have unique consumer purchasing and consumer habits. Uh, we are um, when you look at in comparison to like okay other countries mm. I can't name. <laughs> um, we have a well we have a well educated you know consumer base. Mm which means we are also, we also spend, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is what is informing the entries of, I mean, we've seen quick much come and grow. Mm. I mean, you're talking about Naivas, which is like our number one, mm. you know, tier one with 91 outlets. Mm. I mean, for that kind of investment, it means that there is opportunity. Okay, so this exposed consumer is looking to shop in a certain environment yeah. because i'd assume i mean the same same exposed consumer could be buying the same things that they're buying in a local kiosk but they seem to be going now into a bigger brighter area branded outlets yeah but uh -huh. when we talk about <coughs> the shopping instances of a consumer you're talking between an average of 10 to 15 meaning we are very I'll do my monthly shopping, for example, in a supermarket. Yeah. I will go to my kiosk for still milk and bread. Mm -hmm. I'll still go to my veggies for uh, my veggie shop for something totally different. Mm. I'll still go to the duka in case something is missing within that month. Yeah. So when we talk about shopping instances, that's why they are both relevant, both traditional trade and modern trade. Mm. Let's take a break at this point. It's half past nine. Kenya's biggest conversation, Faith Wanderi is the Managing Director for East and West Africa at Nielsen. She's here telling us about retail trading in the country and especially what Kenyans can do to take advantage of the evolving retail landscape. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Faith Wanderi, MD, East and West Africa at Nielsen City. Hmm. Eh. Nielsen, <laughs> tell us a little bit about Nielsen. Who is he? Yes. <laughs> who are his relatives? Who is the relative? Who is, relative? <laughs> yeah, I Who's know. this Nelson guy? <laughs> so it was started by AC Nelson. Um, mm. Origins, uh, US based, mm. uh, from America. Uh, right now we're present in over 85 countries. Mm. Mm. Uh, in Africa, in, uh, sorry, in Africa, so when we look at, in Africa we are present at least, or operating in at least 20 countries. Mm. Yeah that's that's huge how long has it been in africa again in africa it depends on the different offices oh, okay. when they were opened okay. but at least on average more than 20 years and it's all about data it's all about understanding markets various segments of markets in like you said in east and west you focus a lot more on the retail side on business right understanding the consumer so you've told us how you get to get, gather information from the retail players how do you get information from from undu and i how do you know for example undu's 
consumer habits what she tends to buy hmm. or what she likes to buy so uh depending on it's more of customized research because obviously you have to get the brief from a person who is interested in understanding a particular segment mm -hmm. or a particular age group you know or female or male so with that we draw up a methodology specific for that and mm. we go into the market and ask the different the various people in terms of their opinion would you like shopping um and we have had different instances some will ask the questions you know during exit of a of a shopping center yeah. others we have a panel who actually say you can always call me if you need you know to get my view or my opinion on abcd mm. i mean all of us have been called by a bank you know asking how do you like our services <laughs> i know you're laughing here yeah. is this is this the right time no <laughs> <laughs> when so, can i call back yes tomorrow <laughs> What time? I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> but some, but you find that other, I mean consumers actually yeah. will respond. So there's always the 20% risk of okay, 20% will not agree for an interview. So it means if you needed 100 people, you need to buffer up and you know recruit 150 mm. so that you, you can get your 100. Yeah, you can get your 100. Mm. How do you categorize the consumer? In terms of in terms of you've said different uh, ca consumer categories you want to understand you know is, is it is it by their income is it by how much they buy is it by the size of their basket is it by how they look how they dress okay so previously um <clears throat> previously in kenya we used to use the abc classification model to basically segment consumers mm. what is that it's basically me asking you do you have a car do you have a fridge at home? Do you have a TV? Uh, you know, what gadget? Do you have a phone? Mm. And then would also, it was basically in terms of, and also how much do you earn? Mm -hmm. Either from a salary point of view of business. So it's essentially a socioeconomic survey. Yes, that, mm. so it was socioeconomic. Mm -hmm. But then we moved from that. So we are currently using the lifestyle measure, measurement. Mm. So lifestyle is different mm. because today, you could be earning, and you know, Kenyans are very, Kenyans are very, very peculiar, very, peculiar, very bright people. I mean, very you could, uh, could be earning innovative. 20K, but your lifestyle. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> so you'll be earning 20K, mm -hmm. but where you live, maybe you've been housed by, yeah. you know, whoever you're working for, you've for been example. Yes. For example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By your company. Then, yes, by mm -hmm. your company. Sure. Then you've opened a kiosk, which is giving you revenue. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then you're doing some farming, you know, in your rural area. So you find that that person is earning 20,000. I can't classify them. So their formal from salary is 20,000. But they have multiple they income, income streams. Multiple income streams. Mm. And also, you know, with this day and age, you don't know also where they're, they're getting the income money from. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm. You cannot classify the income streams. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Understood. True. Mm. So we have to measure them <laughs> using their lifestyle. Okay. So there's a whole scale of 1 to 17 but similar questions and yeah so which one is the currently the lifestyle so which one is equivalent to the previous a what 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 lsm number lsm 15 to 17 so the higher ones yeah the higher number represents the High, higher yes. lifestyle yes and the lower numbers represent the lower lifestyle yeah okay what is it that categorizes the middle lifestyle um I mean, it will still be, I mean, you still have to ask what's your salary base mm -hmm. or do you have, how many TVs do you have? How many cars do you have? You find the middle class mostly will, they always have a family car yeah. to be between one and two. It also determines where do you live. Mm. Um, yeah, it's still similar. It's, but it's, a, it's about the same and then on the lifestyle. And then, yeah, and then it's yeah, tweaked a little bit. Does it also go with the places that they live? So the part of, if, if you are talking about Nairobi, where they live would also contribute to their LSM position. But it can also differ. Eh? Mm -hmm. because Explain that. So for example, I mean, just talking from my view, let me use, I don't know what, should I use a real example? Yes. So for example, you'll find mm. like Kibera 
in terms of the way we've positioned it from a country point of view yeah. it's on the lower end right yeah mm -hmm. but you'll find somebody in kibera he has he owns maybe 20 plots but he lives in kibera he will have his dstv he will have his car parked there are you saying that we should also classify him as lower end so, no. exactly mm -hmm. that's why we're saying the lifestyle now starts playing um, a, a role in this. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So, what does this classification then purpose for? What then, after getting all this information, lower end, higher end, you know, your income, your lifestyle, your income streams, what does then all of this inform? What do you use this information for? You see, for, for most manufacturers, mm. they want to know where to target mm -hmm. their goods. Mm. and services as well right you know and for them once they understand let's say the i want to start by nairobi but where in nairobi yeah because sometimes it's economies of efficiency right you want to put in your money whereby you can get your highest return on investment i see so is that why sorry even before you complete that yeah so i went to a particular store branch and i saw this fascinating thing i saw uh, and I did it specifically. I saw this butter which is infused with herbs and wonderful stuff. It just looks like it's glistening in the thing. In another branch of the same chain. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You won't even find, I can't believe it's not butter. You won't even find anything close to butter. You will find maybe something close to plastic. Same chain. Is that why that is done? Yeah, because you see, you have to look at where are you opening your branch mm -hmm. what is what are who are living around there what is the consumer behavior what do they want to buy what are they but most you've likely just to said, buy but you've just said that you cannot classify that based on where somebody lives no no so why would you do that no 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 so what i was saying and that's why we're talking about instead of just looking at the money the socioeconomic yeah. point of view yeah. you also have to look at the lifestyle right okay and even with the lifestyle you're still segmenting those shoppers mm -hmm. you know okay so you will not it's like putting a Fendi in somewhere here, you know, hoping that people will come and buy. Mm. Okay, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give an example. <laughs> but the, but yeah. it's, you know, yeah. Fendi. Oh wow! No, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Point proven. That, that yeah. right. <laughs> right there. <laughs> so I, I, so you get me, and that's why. Imagine if they stored that butter and what you're saying with all this infused, mm. it will rot. Mm. They will lose money. What's the likelihood Nobody of, buy of the people in this area yeah. actually going for this kind of product? Right. So, uh, but this has also got to, one, you look at the likelihood, the possibilities. Yes. But then you also have to listen to the consumer yeah. and what the consumer would likely come and ask for. Yeah. Are there, from your experience, are there chains that have actually opened a shop somewhere and this thought that this is what this uh, consumer segment would be and then that consumer segment went and completely shocked them by asking for different things i must i must say in terms of especially for like the tier ones they use a lot of data before before they open the shops uh we also work with them mm. you know we can also and that's what i was saying the benchmark and you find that they're they're very agile and they can really move fast in terms of the consumer goods. Mm. And if you think about it, if you go to these branches, especially when they're newly opened, you know, they have all these people on the aisles and it just happens that you'll say, I can't find my yes. X brand. The person will have noted and come back two weeks later. Most you'll likely find you'll find that category so they use a lot of data mm. i've not i've not seen an instance where they've actually failed you mm. know there's yeah. a trend i have observed huh? mm. where uh, some business enterprises actually offer this very process of shopping for you online in yes. kenya yes where you're supposed to call this give a list blah 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 now if i look at international uh, outlets such as this one, on, online uh, outlets, they take it even further. If you browse and look for certain things, after a while, they start, inf they start informing you. Of other things. Yes, mm -hmm. they, they, they tell you, perhaps, would you like this? Would you like mm -hmm. the other? Or they, 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 they guide you and lead you. Now, 
or they say people who've bought this item have also, also bought this. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, 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 yes. Conditioning your mind, anything. Yes. Now, um, th- that particular way, where data is clearly being used, you seem to have shown an interest in camping gear. So now they give you a whole array of camping gear you didn't even know existed. Okay, and other things to do with it. They even tell you sort of vehicles that are good for for for, for camping. Are we at a point where your organization also has a foothold in this particular arena? And how do you uh, interact? I'm going to use this word, which I've never used before, but I like it. Interface. Extrapolate. Uh, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, (laughs) You see, you're talking about the big bets. Yeah? Yeah. We call it the big bets when you talk about the future of the retail space e-commerce e-commerce yes. is one of the big bets mm-hmm. we are not at the point where we're looking at we can't compare ourselves like to europe and to the us but our rate of growth and the use of e-commerce like the online shopping is talking about is there so you find that we are talking to partners you know like like Glovo and Jumia, you know, mm. the same way we were, t- we were talking to the tier ones to partner with us because we know that that's where the growth will come from. What you talked about where you check for camping gear and then you get the next thing you're being asked suggestions, mm. it's all about algorithm. Okay? Data is mind. It's all about big data. You can use your Instagram. When you use your Instagram, or okay, for you, no. Mm. I think for so him. He has Instagram. <laughs> oh, he a, has Instagram. He's a hey, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you find that once once you Google or open something mm. on your Insta or in you know the other social platforms, mm. they tend every time it tends now to inform you and get you to see the same thing or yeah. the same topic or related topics mm. or reta- related commodities. So it's all about the algorithm <coughs> and big data. It's all connected. So you're saying that there's an opportunity for the big jump in the Kenyan retail space going big time on, on, on e-commerce. Now I know some of these brands, um, we can actually mention them, the task is CEO Kimani has been here and he's told us, yeah, they're thinking in that direction and they're looking at uh, Naivas, Naivas, <laughs> Naivas. I know, I, I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and and the direction that they are taking on this, um, working on placing products on the e-commerce platforms, creating their own e-commerce. What does a consumer say from what you see? Is a consumer looking into e-commerce? they've already started mm. online shopping and for for most of the consumers uh, it's what what i mentioned it's not over 10 percent of their shopping because it's still very niche in terms of you have to have internet accessibility you know and all that but there's a huge appetite i mean i mean you're a woman i'm a woman we know nowadays you're all online mm. buying dresses buying shoes none of people are not going into town you know no. to look for yeah for mm. those things mm. so the appetite is there and that's the direction that we are all going into and then if you look at that's just e-commerce there's a lot of disruption as well it's no longer the way it was 10 15 years ago where you had manufacturer giving selling to wholesaler wholesaler selling to distributor distributor now selling to retailer retailer. no 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 the disruption is even manufacturers are directly connecting with the consumer Mm. you find that we also have in betweens you know different organizations where they have warehouses you know Mm. whereby they are also trying to get to the consumer Mm. directly so there's a lot of disruption in that area i have a sense that the disruption is actually going to jump into this 61 percent which is not on the modern trade mm. because like you talked about the places that you're shopping are not in these modern trade facilities you you have your own you have your plug for whatever you have a plug for shoes you have a plug for dresses you have a plug for this and the other and those are all in the informal mm. there are many of the people who are actually using that kind of e-commerce direct connection or platform looking in going into instagram and finding somebody who is selling this and the other or a plug for this and that are on the 61 percent so are they 
big boys of modern trade being left behind? No, they're not being left behind. And that's why I said both segments are growing. Both segments are still very, very key in terms from a society point of view. And both segments, and that's why I talked about the shopping instances, you will still go to your modern trade. You will still do your traditional trade, your duka. I will still have my plug for meat. Mm. You know, mm. I will still have, as in the consumer is actually evolving you know and yeah with different factors playing in place so you mentioned something interesting when you one goes to supermarkets individual who stand on the aisles and again you may mention you're looking for this and it isn't quite there now if you look at from a wholesome perspective of that particular data the upward trajectory of the interests of the buyers of the customers what do you see do you see the movement, the upward movement growing in terms of the quantities they buy? Are you seeing a shift in the varieties of what they buy? Are you seeing a shift, if anything, up or down of the quality in terms of pricing of what it is they buy? What do you see? Okay, that's a very interesting question. So, <clears throat> from our data, yes. I can tell you that when I look at the top 10 categories that are growing mm. they are not your necessities mm. which is quite interesting it also just shows you that consumers are evolving when i talk about which are the top um i have long life milk you have your premixed cordials you have your energy drinks they are growing faster but the base is more but they're growing faster you're talking about these are categories that are growing over 50 percent mm -hmm. you know it means that people are understanding oh okay i want to try this new energy drink and everything mm -hmm. but when i look at top 10 categories that are key in terms of value for kenya it's still our basics it's our flour it's our cooking oil it's our detergents mm -hmm. it's our milks so we are still very we still need our basics, but where the opportunity is in terms of growth, it's it's not our necessities. It's mm -hmm. it's the nice to have mm -hmm. that are growing faster. Meaning, okay, consumers are actually, yeah, shifting also their purchasing habits. Do you ask the why question when you see the trajectory of these growths? Why is there that movement in that direction? That's why you come to us, and that's why that's where I make my money. Mm -hmm. I see. So. Yes. So do you find that <laughs> is, so is, is the trajectory inclusive rather than transformative? So it's not chick just because you said yes. the basics are still there. Yeah. Flour, whatever, sh salt, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's now inclusive of a little bit of luxury here, a little bit of maybe non-necessity. Is that what you're seeing yes, as well? Yes, oh, yes, yes, okay. yes. So the basics are still there. Mm. But when you look at growth, it means that you're going to the supermarket and you're looking at this drink and you're like, okay, mm. let me try it. Mm. Uh, you're looking at a particular brand of yogurt for if you have children or, or even for yourself. Or butter that's infused. Or butter with, uh, that is infused. Uh, and you put it in your basket, yeah. <laughs> meaning it was more of impulsive. Mm. But yeah, so... Yeah, it's when you say retail, what are your limits? Do you go to motor vehicles? Uh, tractors. So we we can anything that can that that can inform <laughs> an investor mm. we do. So we're also in the financial sector, uh, we're in the cement sector, we have oil and gas. So we're not very li we're not actually limited so it's not just as FMCGs. long as there's a purchase and there's a i mean there's a need and there's a purchase and there's paying of money we'll track it okay good faith we thank you very much for joining us thank you for all the insights that you've given us